Hey guys, welcome to Geometry 8-3, the law of science. In this lesson, we'll be able to use the law of science to solve problems. In the next lesson, we'll look at law of cosines. Um, so let's look at explore and reason. Consider the 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees triangle shown. Calculate the values of the ratios, sine A over BC and sine C over AB. How are the values of ratios related? So let's calculate the values of ratios here first. So in your calculator, you are going to plug in sine 60 divided by 5 square root 3. So uh, let me stop share for a moment. So here. So you're going to press sign and then 60 degrees. Make sure your mode is in degrees instead of radian mode because the answer would be different. And then divided by BC, which is given five square root three. And make sure you put the parentheses in there so that you're dividing the whole thing, the whole BC, uh, which is five square root three. Okay, if you don't put the parentheses in there, you might just divide five and multiply square root three. And that is not correct. Okay, so make sure you put in all the technical stuff in there. Okay, and click enter. Um, mine says I plugged in something wrong, so I'm going to do it again. Sign 60 parentheses and then divide it by parentheses. 5 square root 3. And then you go outside and do parentheses again. Okay, and now it works. So please don't mind the last one because notation was a little bit off. Make sure you put the parentheses um, outside here. I think I put it inside. So I think that was the notation that wasn't um, okay. But here, so sine 60 divided by the whole parentheses, five square root three, and close the parentheses outside the square root. And you will get one tenth or 0 0.1. Okay, why don't we do the next one? Sine C, um, sine C is sine 30 degrees and then divided by uh, parentheses five. You don't need to put the parentheses, but for technicality, I have put parentheses in there and click enter and you're gonna get one tenth as well. So how are the values of the ratios related? How are they related? they're the same, right? So yeah, you can say um, the values, the values are equal, which is one over 10 or 0 0.1, okay? All right, what about part B? Um, do you think the ratios would have the same relationship in any 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees right triangle? Explain your answer. Do you think this will stay for this type of special triangle? Well, we know that the, that the 30, 60, 90 degrees triangle would have the same ratios, right? A, if AB is X, AC is two times X, and um, BC is going to be, um, x square root three. Okay, so these are the ratios that stay. And um, because sine is also talking about the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse, it's always going to be the same ratio because the ratios of the special triangle uh, is going to stay the same. So let's write that down and say, Yes, they will always be equal. Sides of a 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees right triangle always have the same proportion. The angles always have the same size. Yeah, so essential question, how can the law of signs be used to determine side lengths and angle measures in acute and obtuse triangles? 
Let's look at example one, explore the sine ratio. How can you use the sine ratio to relate the lengths and angle measures in triangle ABC? So first you can construct the altitude AD from vertex A. Okay, the altitude intersects BD, BC at point D forming right triangle because by definition altitude is the height that is perpendicular to your ground. Okay, so in this case, BC is your base. Um, and so altitude AD would be perpendicular. So write equations for sine B and C using the right triangles. Sine B is going to be, um, if that's H, H over C, the opposite side over hypotenuse. Sine C is going to be the opposite side, which is also H over hypotenuse B, okay? So uh, H is going to be C times sine B here, and H is going to be B times sine C here. So if we set the two expressions for H equal to each other, C times sine B is equal to B times sine C because they're both equal to H. They should be equal to each other. We know that sine B over B is equal to sine C over C if we divide both sides by C and B. So this is the definition of the sine ratio. And this basically explains what the law of sine is, okay? Um, so for uh, so example one, try number one, show that sine A over A is equal to sine B over B. And that's also equal to sine C over C. So we have proven, we have proven that sine B over B is equal to sine C over C. So in the same way, can we show that sine A over A is the same with the other ratios as well? Okay. Um, in order to get, in order to get A, in order to use A, um, we need to use the opposite angle A. So you're going to construct another altitude to vertex B and label the length of the altitude K and use that instead so that you can compare them, right? So what if, let me copy that triangle down. So you have A, B, C. Um, and this is A, that's C, and that's B. So what if we create an altitude from B to AC, and that's gonna be a right, right angle. Now we're gonna call this altitude K, okay? And then we can say that sine A is going to be K, the opposite over hypotenuse C. And sine C, is going to be the opposite over hypotenuse A. So K over A, okay? And then we can solve it like we do it here. So, so then let's write this horizontally. Sine A is K over C. Sine C is K over A. And so C times sine A is K. A times sine C is K. And so C sine A is equal to A sine C. That's also sine, uh, that's also sine A over A is equal to sine C over C, okay? So since we know, we already know that sine B over B is equal to sine C over C, and sine A over A is also equal to sine C over C, by transitive property of equality, we can say that all of them are equal to each other. Okay, so let's um, let's summarize a little bit and say uh, construct the altitude vertex B and label the length of the altitude. Then we know then we know all these uh, steps are true. And so all of them, then this, so sine A over A is equal to sine B over B. 
is equal to sine angle C over line C, okay? So this is basically the law of sine. So look at the next page. Law of sines for any triangle ABC with side lengths A, B, and C opposite angles A, B, and C respectively, the law of sines relates the sine of each angle to the length of the opposite side. Now, does it say it has to be a right triangle? No, the, the crazy thing and the wonderful thing about law of sines is that you don't need a right triangle. It works for all triangles, okay? So yeah, so if your, if your um, length of A is going, is all, so your alphabet, small alphabet is opposite to your angle of the capitalized alphabet, then you can always say that sine A over A so the sign capital letter over small letter would always be equal to another proportion that's like that, okay? Example two, use a law of signs to find a side length. So now we're gonna try to figure out the missing information. For triangle X, Y, Z, what is Y, Z to the nearest 10, okay? Well, we don't really know if this is, uh, if, if this is a right triangle, it's not a right triangle. If, you know, um, like what kind of proportions we have, right? But we can figure out um, the missing information using the sign, the law of sign, because we know if this is X, line X, like the length X, and then Y, length Y is the opposite of angle Y, and this is Z, we know the sign of 51 degrees over X would be the same of sine of 77 degrees over seven, right? So we're gonna use that proportion and figure out using calculator because we can use calculator, okay? So first figure out um, the equation. So write the proportion and then we're gonna find the missing information, which is YZ. Um, and that's going to be that's going to be um, seven times sine fifty one because if we multiply seven on both sides that cancels out and then we multiply y z on both sides and divide sine seventy seven on both sides we get y z is equal to seven sine fifty one degrees divided by sine seventy seven degrees. So in your calculator you're gonna you're gonna put parentheses if you don't put parentheses well. Technically, you don't have to for this one, but just make a habit that you put a parenthesis whenever you see a fraction like that, okay? So seven times sine 51, the parentheses, seven sine 51, and then divided by sine 77. It's going to be about 5.583116648. So we're going to round it up to about 5.6. Okay, so you will use the calculator after you figure out um, the expression. So try number two. In example two, what is x, y to the nearest tenth? Now we want to figure out x, y. Wait, x. No, X, Z, okay? So how do we do that? First, we need to figure out the angle Y because we want to use sine Y over Y, right? So we know that the triangle has um, sum of 180 degrees. The 180 minus 51 minus 77 would be the angle of Y, 52 degrees, okay? So 108, so Y, is equal to 180 minus 77 uh, minus 55, which is 52 degrees, okay? Using that, you can use a proportion, sine 52 degrees over XZ is equal to, you can use any um, given information, but since YZ is rounded up, we're gonna use exact information we have, so that's more accurate sine 77 over seven, okay? And then you can put in the calculator, XZ 
is going to be what? 7 sine 52 degrees divided by sine 77. Okay, so 7 sine 52 divided by sine 77 is going to be 5.661170714. So that's going to be about 5.7, rounded to the nearest 10. Okay. All right, let's look at example three. Use law of science to find the measure of an angle. What are measure of angle R and measure of angle S and triangle RST? So now we know the lengths, some lengths. We want to figure out these two angles, okay? Obviously, we can't just figure out those two angles when we just have one information for one, um, one angle. Right, so we're gonna use the law of sines. We know two side lengths and they're not exactly equal. So it is not an isosceles triangle. So S is gonna be, you can guess that S angle S is gonna be close to 74 degrees, but it's not exactly going to be, okay? Because the sides here are very similar, but they're a little bit different, okay? So use a proportion. Sine S over 12.7 should equal to sine 74 over 12.3. And yeah, and then when you get to sine S is equal to 12.7 times sine 74 over 12.3, um, you're gonna you're gonna use the inverse function, okay, in order to get sine, uh, in order to get the angle. So remember. When you have an angle equal to a ratio, then you're gonna, you can use the inverse function to figure out the angle, okay? Inverse function lets you figure out what your angle is for the sign. So shift sign in your calculator gives you the inverse function, okay? You see that? And then you're gonna, if you already solved for it, you can just plug in 0 0.9925 but that's already rounded up. So to be exact, ideally, you're gonna put in uh, whatever expression you have in your sine parentheses. So 12.7 sine 74 divided by 12.3 parentheses. So you see what I mean? Um, let, me, let me explain. So in your calculator, it, it is more exact if you put inverse sign, so second or shift sign, and then 12.7 um, times sine 74, and then you're gonna divide by 12.3 and then close the parentheses, okay? And then you're gonna hit enter. And that's going to be 82.9887666.1. And so let's go back. That's going to be our angle. So it's, it's going to be about 83. Are we right? Yes. Okay. And then, so now we know S. We can use the triangle angle sum for formula to figure out the remaining angle. If you want to use the law of sines again, you can, but it's now, since you have two angle measures that are given, it's easier to just subtract those two from 180 degrees. And so remaining angle is 23 degrees. Okay. Yeah. So let's try number three on the next page. What is measure of angle N, what is measure of angle O? Figure out those two measures by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So using law of science, you're gonna use the proportion sine 70 degrees over four meters is going to equal to sine N over two meters, right? And so, you know that sine n is going to be two times sine 70 over four. You can simplify it if you can. 
Um, so sine 70 divided by two is sine n. You can use an inverse function and say n is equal to inverse sine of sine 70 over two, okay? So in your calculator, you can use shift sine, which gives you inverse sine, and then sine 70 degrees divided by two. That's going to be 28.02432 dot, dot, dot. So, um, so angle N is about 28 degrees. Okay, what about angle O? Using the same equation, using the same ratio, you're going to say sine 70 over 4 is equal to, wait, you don't need to use the law of sines now. So 180 minus 28 minus 70 degrees is going to be your remaining angle, which is going to be 82 degrees, okay? So that's also about 82 degrees because you round it up on the second um, angle. So that's also going to be approximately 82 degrees. Okay. So let's look at the last example, application part. Apply the law of science. The map shows the path of pilot flu between Omaha and Chicago in order to avoid a thunderstorm. How much longer is this route than the direct route to Chicago? Okay, so if you can see the direct route, it's only 471 miles. But then you see that there's a thunderstorm here and it is safe to fly around it. So how much longer is this route than the direct, direct route to Chicago is the question. So you wanna figure out the distance from Omaha to the turning point and to turning point to Chicago, okay? And then you're gonna subtract them. So first we can let X represent the distance from the turning point to Omaha, okay? So that's gonna be X. And you can figure out using law of signs Sine 113 over 471 should equal to sine 22 over X. And using calculator, it's, a, it's gonna be about 191.7. And then using, um, using the same law, uh, you first need to figure out the angle of Omaha here. So 180 minus 113 minus 22 is 45 degrees. And so using law of sines, sine 113 over 471 should equal to sine 45 over y. And using the calculator, uh, 471 sine 45 over sine 113 is going to be 361.8. So if you add them, you're going to get 553.5 miles. So if you want to find the difference of these, you subtract 471 and you're going to get 82.5 miles, which is the distance um, that you additionally traveled. So it's 82.5 miles further. Okay, let's look at trial number four. Suppose the pilot chose to fly north of the storm instead of South, how much farther is that road, route than the direct route? Um, so we're gonna find another distance here. Oh, one distance from Omaha to this turning point is already figured out. So we wanna find the last distance and see how much farther. So we need to find the distance again. See if you can do this by yourself, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, so using the law of sines, you know, if that's x that you want to figure out, sine 15 over x should be equal to, you don't know what this angle is, so you're going to subtract 180 minus 148 minus 15 to get that angle, which is 17 degrees, and so sine 17 degrees over 260 is going to be um, equal to that. Or you can use 148 over 471 again, okay? Either way works. This or sine 
148 degrees over 471 equals sine 15 over x, you should get the same answer. If you want to, if you really want to see if they, if you get the same answer, you can try, but you should. Okay. So figuring out either way, x is going to be, um, should be, should be the same. Okay. So x here is going to be 260 sine 15 degrees divided by sine 17 degrees. If you multiply 260 on both sides, if you divide sine 17 on, on both sides, if you multiply x on both sides, that's what you get, okay? You're isolating the variable. Okay, and then putting in the calculator, 216 sine 15 divided by sine 17 is equal to 230, Point one six two three two six four dot dot dot. So two sixty plus two thirty point you know one six is going to be about four ninety point one six, and that's going to be about how much more than four seventy nine? Uh, four seventy one. You can subtract it. 471, that's going to be about 19 point, 19 point, wait, 490.16 minus 471. So this is going to be 19.16. So about 19 miles um, further is your answer. Okay, so that was law of science. Let's summarize our concept, our lesson. So for any triangle ABC, any type of triangle um, that has a side length A, B, and C, that are opposite angles A, B, and C, respectively, the law of sines relates the sine of each angle to the length of the opposite sides. So for example, if this is your diagram where your angles are A, B, C shown and your lengths are side lengths are A, B, and C shown, they're opposite, okay? So your law of sines says sine A of angle A over length A is, should be equal to sine angle B over length B and and that should also be equal to sine angle C over length C. All right, that was lesson 8-3, law of sines. And we will look at law of cosines in the next lesson. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.